I love doing Carrie's Paradox with students. It really illustrates what we would like to believe is true about area. In fact, in any geometry course, we need to define our beginning terms. And area suffers from a particular problem that we don't really know how to define it. We don't know what it is. I mean, most people say that area is, for example, the amount of space in a figure. But what exactly do we mean by space? And what do we certainly mean by the amount of it? It's actually very hard to pin down. And that's a general problem with the geometry. They often don't need to start with first words, but those words need to be defined, which require first words, which need to be defined. We're in sort of circular definitions. But to area, we feel like we know what it is. We feel like we know what we mean by amount of space. And what I really like to do with our students is do Curry's Paradox, here's just part of it, because it illustrates the key things that we think area should do. Namely, for example, we'd like to believe that the area of a shape doesn't change by moving things around. And that comes in two parts. Namely, I like to believe the area, say, this whole triangle, which I've got as two smaller pieces that just touch along the air edges, would be equal to the sum of the areas of the two individual parts. So some people might call that a conservation of area principle. So the area of a big figure equals the area of its parts added together, provided those parts are only touching along edges. Okay, fair enough. So we believe in conservation of area. Uh, maybe another version of conservation area would be that area doesn't change if I move pieces about. For example, if I took that triangle and moved over yonder, I don't believe the area of that piece has changed. Uh, to get the geometry language, let me actually draw that triangle on the board. There we go. And if I move it over here and draw it here, what I've really got going on the board now is two congruent triangles. So maybe my second principle I'd like to believe about area is that congruent figures have the same area. All right, that's another sort of posture, another beginning point of belief you'd like. So now I've got two things I really deeply believe about area illustrated by Curry's paradox. That uh, area of a whole is the sum of the area of the parts and that congruent figures have the same area. But it's not really enough to get started on. We need the area of something. And when I challenge people, most people say, well, they do know the area of a square at least. For example, if I draw a one by one by one square, most people like to say that has area one. In fact, most people are willing to go a little bit further, not just squares. Let's, uh, that's my eraser. Let's uh, talk about rectangles. For example, if I have a three by four rectangle, most people would say that the area of that beast is three times four, 12 square units. And they can justify it by literally drawing in the 12 unit squares that fit perfectly in a three by four rectangle. Okay, fair enough. But things can get a little strange when I start pushing the numbers. So, for example, if I did a three and a third by four and two fifths rectangle, do we like to believe that area is still length times width? And most people say yes, and they feel they could justify it by drawing in the three squares and the little fraction of a square, and drawing the four unit squares and getting another fraction of a square. And maybe, you know, add up fractions, you can actually justify this formula yet again. Well, if I keep pushing it, then justifications become a little harder to, to follow. For example, if I gave you a root two by 17 and three quarters over pi rectangle. But I guess most people would say, even though it's hard to draw the squares for this, that they'd like to believe that the area of a rectangle is length times width, no matter what. Well, if that's what we'd like to believe, let's be honest, let's just make that a belief. That's our third belief about area. Conservation of area, number one, congruent figures have the same area, number two, and number three, areas of rectangles are going to be declared to be length times width, no matter what. And believe it or not, those three basic principles are essentially it to defining a really good theory of area, enough at least for high school geometry. And let me explain what I mean. Let me derive for you the formula for the area of a triangle based on those three ideas and nothing more. So here are the three principles of area. That the area of the whole is some of the area of the parts, assuming those parts are only touching on the edges, not overlapping in any way. That congruent figures have the same area, and that we like to believe that the area of a rectangle is length times width, no matter what. So I claim from those three principles we can logically deduce the form of the area of a triangle. Uh, most people call the base of the triangle B the height of H, and everyone knows the formula area equals half base times height, but here's how it follows logically. Uh, everyone's probably thinking, put this triangle in a rectangle, which I can do as follows. And that divides the rectangle into four parts. One, two, three, four. So, obviously principle number one is going to come in. I'm going to claim the area of the rectangle is the sum of these four parts. Fine. I claim that triangles one and triangles two, if I just look at the left portion of this rectangle, are actually congruent. They both have a 90 degree angle. 
I know the sides of, of rectangle are parallel, so I've, I'm going to use alternate interior angles and get a, a principle going on. And since they share the diagonal, these two triangles have scale factor 1. So yes, by the fact that congruent figures have the same area, I can now say that area 1 equals area 2. But the same argument, area 3 equals area 4. So I'm just using the second principle, congruent figures have the same same uh, area. And then I know that the area of the whole rectangle by principle 3 is going to be the height, that's the side length of the rectangle, times base, base times height. Well now it's obvious that since area 1 and area 2 are equal, area 3 equals area 4, that I can now say that area 2 plus area 3 is half of the whole rectangle. That is the area of the triangle is half base times height. And that's how it follows from those three principles. Now this is still a questionable formula, and let me show you where I, I worry about that formula a little bit. 